So in simplifying these expressions, sometimes we'll have something that's a quadratic expression. So what we're going to do in this video is kind of a little bit of review and then applying it to our trig problems that we'll be dealing with. But something you could keep in mind is that when we deal with these trig functions and we have a square and just one of them, you can relate that in terms of x, like having something squared plus 2 times something plus 1 would be the same thing as having sine squared plus 2 times sine plus 1. It's the same setup, and we can work with it in the same way that we did in our algebra classes previously. So algebraically here, if I wanted to simplify this, what I would do is factor. So I would go x plus 1 times x plus 1 and that would make it all factored. Um, if you wanted to simplify this even further, we could combine that and just express it as x plus 1 squared, and that would work as well. So in this form, what I would do is the exact same thing. It would be factoring. So I would end up with two factors, and where we ended up with x plus 1 times x plus 1, it's just instead of x, we're saying x is the same thing as sine of t. So I would write this as sine of t plus 1, sine of t plus 1. Which maybe that form is helpful for us to, for simplifying with identities. Um, I can't really do anything with those. And what I mean by can't do anything, something I'm just mentally checking for is can I use some of those identities from the previous video? But since sine isn't squared there, I don't have any substitution that I can make. So with that, we could go that one step further and say that this is the same thing as sine of t plus 1 squared. And that would be done. With your work with identities, a very common mistake is to drop the variable. So what I mean by that, and I'm going to mark this with the don't do this. <laughs> this is a very common mistake, especially when we want to work quickly. But with these, it's all about proof. We're proving the process when we're doing these. And part of that proof is that our work needs to be perfect. <laughs> so with that, a common mistake is when you start simplifying is to drop the variable, meaning writing this where we don't have t anymore. This does not make any sense in mathematics because sine is a function and it needs an input. It's like if we were working with f of x and we just dropped x there. It kind of makes sense, but not really. We need to see the input for our function and we need to know what that variable is. So we can't drop our variable. Just think you always need a variable with your trig function. That disappears, can mess everything up. So don't drop the variable. I'll just kind of keep emphasizing that because it's such a common thing that comes up in these sections. All right, if we had x squared minus 3x, this is a case where there's a common factor. So there's a common factor of x, so I'm going to factor out x to the front. And inside I would have x squared divided by x is just x minus 3x divided by x, which is 3. And that would be all done. So we can do the same thing with our trig functions. So with this, in fact, I'm going to leave a little space off to the side here because I'm also going to kind of emphasize what we're going to be doing with identities. But looking at this, I have something squared minus 3 times that same thing. So what I can do is factor out this tangent of t. Factor out tangent of t. It's a common factor there. So tangent of t will come out front, and inside of the parentheses, what I'll have is I'll still have one tangent left over, minus 3, and those tangents canceled out, and that would be all done. Now, something I'm going to bring up when we get into more verifying identities is typically when I see tangent, I switch to sine and cosine. So what we could have done here without that factoring route, we could have gone, this is the same thing as sine of t over cosine of t squared minus 3 times sine of t over cosine of t. And we could have started simplifying. So it's sine squared over cosine squared minus 3 sine of t 
over cosine of t. And then maybe we could do stuff with simplifying it down. Um, I'm not going to go into that here because really we're just focusing on quadratics, but just an idea of what we're going to be doing in our future, like verifying identities, is that we can go this factored at route, but something that might happen is that if we switch everything into terms of sine of t and cosine of t, there might be ways to combine them. And in the next video, we're going to focus on these rational expressions and how to work with them. But for now, just that form is great for what we're doing. All right, with this one, we have a common factor of 2 and x. So we can factor out 2x, and that'll leave us with 1 minus 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we'll still have 1x left over. So in this form, it's like sine of t is where we had x, so I can factor out a 2 and a sine of t. So 2 sine of t will come out front, and then in parentheses we have a 1 left over minus 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then we still had a sine left over. So we can factor out a common factor where the trig function itself is a common factor. All right, one more here. So this is our trinomial. So that means I'm going to look at factoring this. Um, <clears throat> I usually teach the AC method for factoring these, where you use the value for A and the value for C. Um, you can look that up if you need review of it. This one and the ones we deal with should be fairly simple. You could go trial and error method, meaning what I know is I need x at that front spot. And in order to have 2 multiplying with x, that means one of them needs a 2 out front, and the other has to have a 1. Now, I have two values that are multiplying to give a positive 1, and they're going to add together to give a negative. So what that's going to tell me is both of these are going to need to be negative. And to multiply to positive 1, we would need 1 and 1. So that just kind of fills in the blank, and then I would double check that it matches up with that value for b, which I would have negative 2x minus x, which is negative 3x. So you could always refoil it and double check that you have it right, but with the trial and error method, it's kind of putting together the pieces at the front, put together the pieces at the end, and double check that it matches what you have in the middle. All right. So now this one has the same exact numbers, it's just instead of our variable x, we have cosine. So what I would have is I'd go through that same process of, okay, we'd have a 2, and we're dealing with cosine, and we'd have a 1 cosine, and then two values that multiply to a positive 1 but add up to a negative, minus 1 and minus 1. All right, so there's just some review of how we simplify quadratics and then how we can apply the same exact methods to our trig functions. And eventually, if it helps, like if we got this problem, it's easier to think of it in terms of x. Like if we're not going to make any trig substitutions, if you just need to write it like this off to the side and simplify and then just make sure you substitute back in for x that cosine of t, that absolutely works as well.